All right, lesson 2-6 is really a springboard from 2-5. So you're going to see a lot of overlap. In 2-5, we talked about that constant of proportionality. What that means is every time, like we talked about with the jump start, every time car one goes one hour, they go 40 more miles. One more hour, 40 more miles. One more hour, 40 more miles. It's a constant change or a constant rate of change. Um, and so I want you to get familiar with terminology like rate of change, slope, uh, constant of proportionality, even loosely connected unit rate where we always make the denominator one. Okay, that's finding the unit rate. So basically, if you're talking about like that bushel of apples from Tuesday, we wanted to know, yes, they charge this for 15 ounces, but what do they charge for one ounce? That's called unit rate. Um, and then for our jump start, when we had our cars, what you were actually finding, even though you didn't necessarily know it yet, is you were finding the slope, okay? Or that proportion that tells you that constant change that happens every hour or minute or second or whatever the story problem happens to be talking about, okay? So we're gonna, it says connect, proportional relationships to slope. So basically we're gonna take what we learned during 2.5, which was that proportional relationship. And now we're gonna kind of slowly introduce it into how it connects with slope, okay? And slope is just how quickly a line rises or falls. So nothing, but think of a ski slope, all right? How steep is the ski slope? Um, that's, that's all that slope is, all right. So understanding slope, this example one, it says Maya and her father are building a tree house. The roof will have a nine to 12 pitch. That is. That nine to 12 pitch is your proportion. Like they give you the proportion. So you don't even have to figure it in this case. Um, that what and it says that is for every 12 inches of horizontal distance. Does everybody know which way horizontal is talking about? Good, side to side. This is horizontal. If you ever forget, think horizon. If you look out over the horizon, it always goes this way. Okay, it's always side to side. So for every 12 inches of horizontal movement or distance, there is nine inches of rise. Okay. Now they tell you it's it's kind of, I wish they had flip-flopped that in the sentence, okay? The roof will have a nine to 12 pitch. Really, when we talk about slope, we usually discuss rise first. So, and this is kind of jumping ahead just a little bit. It won't hurt you to write it in two different places. So we are gonna be talking about slope. And right here next to slope, I want you to write rise over run. Okay, rise over run. And rise is talking about the up or down movement. That makes sense. And run is talking about the left to right movement. And to get just to kind of what we just now said, that's the same thing as vertical over horizontal. And if we can tie it into what we did on Tuesday, go one step further is to say, if you think about your axes on a graph, which axis is vertical? Which one goes up and down? The so Y, this should look familiar. And which one goes horizontal? The X. Didn't we on Tuesday say that to find that, um, constant over proportion or constant of proportionality or to find speed, it was distance over time. And we said, it's always Y over X. This is how it ties in. It all kind of feeds into that same idea. So when we're talking about slope, so here where they discuss it, right? They actually mention the horizontal movement first. I would actually like to say as the roof rises, right? Rises nine inches it moves horizontally 12 inches because really we typically always say rise over run. We usually talk about the rise before we talk about the run, okay? So if you look at this roof, roof picture, what it means is that we're gonna rise nine, 
right? And I'm going to do it on this side just because I usually prefer to do it on this side. We're going to rise nine and run 12. And we can keep doing that all the way up the roof. We can rise nine, run 12. Now, obviously this is not going to be to scale because I'm not on a graph that has grid that I can really count, but you get my idea. We can rise nine, run 12, rise nine, run 12. And that rise nine, run 12, rise nine, run 12, rise nine, run 12 is considered the slope, okay? And because we always do the rise over the run, we could write that as nine over 12. And because we always reduce fractions in math, that equals three fourths. So the slope of this roof is three fourths, okay? Are we good with that part so far? That's really the basics of slope is just that it is rise over run and it's constant, okay? All right, so looking at the problem, we know right here, it tells us the constant of proportionality is 9 twelfths. It's also backed up in the picture, right? It rises 9, it runs 12, so the picture and the paragraph back each other up. And now it says, how can Maya determine the height of the roof at its peak? Well, here is the peak of the roof. I'll do it in red. Here's the peak of the roof. So I need to know if this is our, I'm sorry, let me, if this is our y-axis and our x-axis, right? That's what a graph looks like. This would be our x-axis. This would be our y-axis. I want to know what is the x value when the y value is, I'm sorry, what is, I want to know what, the, I said that backwards. I want to know what the y value is, right? I want to know what the height is when the x value is above the peak, which is right here. And they give us that information that we need to, to figure that out because they give us that the, would, this, would that six feet, would that be the x or the y? The x. So they give us the x and they're asking us the height and we know the height is the rise or the y. So, and really I don't like that they use X for the variable because we're talking about X's and Y's so that can get a little confusing. So let's change this variable to H for height, okay? I think that'll help a little bit. Let's change that variable to H. That way we're not getting it confused with the other X and Y. All right, so first of all, I wanna point out that we're dealing with inches, 12 inches, nine inches. So what should we do with six feet before we go any further? Make it into inches. Okay, let's just keep everything consistent here. So how many inches is in six feet? 72, you guys are on it, love it. All right, so what I wanna know, if my constant of proportionality or my base fraction is three fourths, and I wanna know what is the height, that's what I don't know, when the distance traveled is 72, right? What is the y or the rise or the height when my run or my distance traveled on the x-axis is 72? Well, hopefully this rings a bell. We did this a couple months ago. How would I solve this proportion? Mallory? Not quite. I see where you're going. Your logic is there, but there's a little bit easier way to get. Do you guys remember the butterfly? Remember when we did the wing equals the wing? So what if we did cross multiply and we do four times H, which is four H and set it equal to the other wing and the other wing is three times 72. Yes. Yeah, we did this. Yeah, we did this about two months ago. <laughs> well, hopefully and it was a whole week. So we, you, we did proportions. It's okay. It'll come back to you. So you cross multiply or you do the butterfly and you do the wing equals the wing. So four H, cause that's four times H equals three times 72 and three times 72 is two sixteen. You guys are on it. Now I just want to solve for H. So I'm going to divide by four and divide by four. And I'm going to get that H equals 54. 54 what? Inches, good. So that means, what does that mean? That means that the roof at its peak 
or the roof after it has traveled 72 inches is at the height of 54 inches. And if you put, right, you should, obviously, if you plug H in or 54 in for H, if you plug 54 in over 72 and you reduce it, what should it reduce to? Three fourths. Yeah, because they're both, they're proportional. Okay. So that is how you do it based on a picture. Now we're going to take this same example and we're going to look at it given to you in a little bit different media or in a little bit different data presentation, which is in this sort of table. Does anybody know why I would call this a sort of table? This, this unit kind of is driving me crazy. Yes. Wait a minute. Go ahead. Cece? It does. Nine, tw nine twelfths equals three fourths. Does anybody see Alex? Yes, and I don't know why this curriculum, this particular curriculum, I'm telling you in all my years of taking college classes, teaching math from other curriculums, I've never seen tables delivered like this. So all I'm saying to you is we just need to be on guard that anytime we're given information in a table in Savas, which is our curriculum, we just need to be mindful to pay attention how they give it to us, okay? And in this case, how was it? Because when I, I will tell you this, when I taught this first hour, which was my first hour teaching it, I went, here's your X's, here's your Y's. And then I was like, oh, wait a minute. What, what do you think caught my attention? It is nine divided by 12. That is right. It's, it's the way we were doing it the other day. We were given the information. Whoops. We were given the information like this and we had to flip it over. Right. But there was something in the wording that got me. Yeah, when I saw the word vertical, I realized vertical is your up and down. That's your y-axis. And so I realized that because the word vertical was there, those were my y's. And because the word horizontal was on the next line, this is your horizontal is think horizon, right? It goes side to side. That's your x-axis. So I had to kind of erase and back up first hour and fix my mistake because I was having my first hour students do this all wrong and I had to catch my error. So all I'm saying when I say that is kind of be mindful that if if it's not an official table, which apparently this is not an official table, because if it was, the X would be on top. You just have to be mindful of how some things are worded so that you can pick out whether it's the X and the Y axis. OK. All right. But that being said, we do know from Tuesday that we figure out that constant of proportionality by dividing the Y divided by the X. So nine divided by 12 is three fourths, 18 divided by 24, three fourths, 27 divided by 36 reduces to three fourths and so on. And then we just figured out if we needed to, we could even stick another box on here because we just added to our table and we said that 54 divided by 72 also reduces to three fourths, right? So we just basically, and if I asked you to add another one, you could, if you wanted to, you could add another one. We're not going to, but you, you can add as many as you want because once you have the, the original fraction of three-fourths, you can figure out an infinite amount of, of uh, points that would also work, okay? All right, so in, in this top example, I showed you how to do it the butterfly way. I personally think that's the easiest way to do it, okay? If you're given a base fraction or a base proportion, and then you're giving you're given one of the two other bits of information. You can always solve for a missing variable. Ms. Gordon. Um, can it be in about well, it's almost the class is almost over. Can it be right at the end of the class? We're right in the middle of notes. Okay, who was it? Olivia and Olivia and Mallory. All right, I'll send them down. Thanks. Will you guys go see Miss Davis right at the end of class? Not right now. Just let, let me get through these notes, okay? All right. So the other way they show you how to do it, and I think this way is a little bit more difficult, but I am going to show you just in case you have to do it on a homework assignment. The other way to do it is to use the graph, okay? And, excuse me, you have to fill in some blanks here because we know that, and I'll kind of blow it up so you can see what I'm talking about. On this graph, it says that two blocks 
equals 12. Does that make sense? So what does one block equal? Six. So you got to be able to fill in some blanks. So I'm going to come in here and go up by six every time. So that would make this one 18, this one 30, 42, 54, and then two blocks down would be 72. And if I really wanted to fill this in, that would be 66, right? So I filled in the blocks and then I'm going to do the same thing going up the side. Now, always check because it's not always going to be the same on the on the x-axis and the y-axis but in this one it is they go up six again so i can just come in here and fill in some gaps okay all right so using the graph again you got to fill in some gaps first and knowing that we need to go out 42 i'm sorry 72 knowing that we need to go out to 72 i need to go up from 72 and see where i intersect my line so I'm going to go up, up, oops. I'm going to go up, 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 up until I intersect my line. There I intersect my line. And now if I go over, where does that intersect my Y? What's my height here? My height is 54. So I got the same answer, right? I got 54 inches here when I did it using the butterfly. And I got 54 inches here when I added to my graph and then went up and went over and found it. Yes. Because, right, that's a good question, right here. It told us, we're using the same example. It told us that we wanna find out the peak after 72 inches. So that means on our x-axis, we need to go all the way over to 72 and then go up and see what that peak is. And that's how. And we know where to stop because where our line, which is this purple line, where our line intersects 72. Okay. All right. Um, let's see. I've got time for one more uh, quick thing. And then this is all we're doing today. We're not going to have homework today. We'll do the rest of the notes tomorrow. And then you'll have tomorrow to do your class home or your homework in class. And hopefully you sail into the weekend with no homework, okay? So last thing we're going to do, and then I'll have you guys go see Miss Davis. We're going to talk about how to look at a graph and find slope. And again, remember slope is rise over run. So I'm going to color code these. That way you guys can know what I'm talking about. So I'm going to call this the red point, And I'm going to call this one the blue point. And what I want to know is I want to know how much do I rise between points? And then how much do I run between points? So if I'm looking at my rise first, I'm rising from here, which is level with my red point, and I rise to here, which is level with my blue point. And again, you got to fill in some gaps here. What's between the 80 and the 100? Okay, so I rose to get from point, red point to blue point, I had to rise how many? 30. All right, so my top number or my rise is 30. Now I have to look at my run and my run is my x-axis or my side to side movement. So if I look at my run, again, I go from my red point, which is at two, and I run over to my blue point, which is at three. So what is my run? One. So my rise is one, my run is, I'm sorry, my rise is 30, my run is one, so my slope, reduces to 30. Okay. You good with that? All right. So I think just because I don't want to rush it, we've only got about five minutes left and we weren't going to get all the way done with it anyway. I think I'll wait till tomorrow to move on to example two um, because example two, it's finding the slope, but it's using something different. Yes. Thank you. Yes. All right, for those of you at home, this is just half of the notes. Tomorrow, I will record the second half of the notes, and then you will do your assignment, which is 2-6 Math Excel.